everybody. Welcome to the first Missouri Star Live of 2021. I hope you had a happy new year and we're so glad that you decided to spend the day with us. I am Misty Doan and we have Liz back behind the Hello. camera and our fabulous film crew is here as well. So thank you to them for being here and making sure you guys can see all good things. So this is so good to be back. Let's see where everyone is tuning in from. We have uh, Karen, Diane from California, another Karen from Pennsylvania, Jane from Minnesota. So many fun friends. Thank you guys so much for being here. You see anybody on YouTube, Liz? Yeah, we've got Shirley from Arizona, Elizabeth from Germany. Oh, awesome. And Laureen from Verona, Kentucky. Very cool. Welcome, welcome. We have a really fun project and product to share with you today. I think you guys are really going to like this. I'm super excited about it. So the main focus of what I want to share with you um, are these English paper piecing stickers. These are called English Paper Piecing Made Modern, and they come, uh, we're, we're doing hexagons, as you can see. These are the one and a half inch hexagons, and they come printed on these adhesive papers. So let me have, I have some already opened over here, so let me grab one of these papers, and I'll show you how this works. Because this was just way too cool, in my opinion. So you're just gonna take your ruler and your scissors or your rotary cutter. If you're worried about doling your blade, if you have an old blade, you could put that in your rotary cutter um, to cut these out. And so we're just gonna start by using the straight edge of our ruler and my rotary cutter to cut out our hexagons. So I like to cut off these edges first. There we go. Make sure I'm not cutting off the points. And then we're gonna come and make our way up the sheet. There's one, two. Now are you gonna get into any trouble for using your rotary cutter on paper? Well, that's what I said. I said if you're worried about it, you can put an old blade in there. Swap it out for an old blade. Um, it will still be plenty sharp to cut your paper, but you won't have to worry about your fabric. I will be honest, I don't think there's any quilt police, so I just use my rotary cutter for whatever I feel like, and when I need a new blade, I just change it out. And you. so, you know, I think, I think we worry about some of those things too often, and it just works itself out. So now I've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart like so. and like this. And so the cutting does take a little bit of time, but if you like a project while you're sitting watching TV, you could totally sit and cut these with scissors um, to get them all ready for you. And when you see how easy this is, I promise cutting them out is worth it. So I'm just gonna cut a couple more here because I have some of them already ready to go. There we go. Do we have uh, English paper piecing lovers watching today? We do, actually. Mm -hmm. We have a note from trying to find, you guys are going so fast. Maria Moore says, funny, I'm sitting in my RV working on my APP while ah, watching you. Ah, perfect. Okay, well, I think you guys are really, really going to like this. So we've cut a few out, and I am using this um, It's Elementary Charm Pack by um, American Jane for Moda, and it's this really great 30s-inspired line. It's darling, those really fun, vibrant colors. Um, but to be totally honest, this is a great scrap project. You do have quite a bit of waste, which I'll show you here, um, from using the five inch square, but it, it's a great project to use a five inch square on or use a charm pack that you just have lying around because it is really darling scrappy. So I'm using this black five inch square as my center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn this so I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric. And then if you look on the back of these hexagons, it's already scored, and so it's really easy to peel the paper off. So you can see I just 
flipped that and there's my little scored edge. Oh, that is handy. It's so handy, it makes it super easy. That peels right off. And then we're just gonna stick this onto our fabric. And we wanna make sure that you have a quarter inch all the way around. And so now we're gonna take this little two and a half by eight inch ruler it is so handy. And I'm gonna line up that quarter inch mark right on the edge of my um, paper template. And I'm just going to turn and cut that quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. All the guesswork. Out all of it. the guesswork. And I love that you're not going to have to baste anything. Just wait, you guys. We are going to have a whole new way to do this. And it really is English paper piecing made modern, which I love. Such a clever idea. So now we have this hexagon with our seam allowance all the way around it ready to go. I've gone ahead and cut out some more that I'm going to use because what we're making is this really darling hexagon pot holder. I love that so much. Isn't it much. so cute? It's really, really fun. And so you can see we have our center, center hex and some uh, six surrounding petals. And then we're going to need 12 background petals. I used white here because I wanted to make sure it really popped for you guys. But in the samples, I actually used one of the prints from Cute. this um, its elementary line to act as my background. But the thing that I really love about this pot holder is it's one of those grippy ones. It's got these little slots for your hand to slide in. So it's the perfect size for like a pie plate or you know a big pot to sit on. But you can also use it to pull things out of the oven. So it's a really, really fun design and it's super easy to make. So let me show you how we do it. So we have our center. Remember the black is my center. And then we're going to put it right sides together with one of our petal colors. And so I'm making a white flower on this. And so I've just set these right sides together. And now we're gonna take this to the machine. And I wanna point this out to you here before I get behind the machine so you can really see. We're gonna start with our needle right on the outside edge of this paper. And we're going to back stitch. So we're gonna take a stitch and back stitch. You don't wanna go past that paper. And then you're gonna sew all the way down and you're gonna do the same thing and back stitch at the other end. But we're going to sew this whole project on the machine. It's super easy. Okay, that also makes me super happy. Right? It's amazing. <laughs> we're not stitching anything by hand. Okay. And so we have some EPP lovers on here who are saying like, I pick up a project and work on it for a while. I don't work on it continuously. Yeah. This actually is something you could work on continuously because it's on the machine. Exactly. And knock that out. So, so that's you pretty could, cool. You could sit and knock it out, but it's also one of those projects. Um, Jenny always says that it's important to take a little bit of time to sew on something for yourself. So you can see from looking at this, that this is essentially the start of a grandmother's flower garden. Absolutely. Quilt. So you could spend a few minutes every day putting together some hexagons and after, you know, a few months, you might have enough of these hexagons put together to make yourself a beautiful vintage style quilt, which would be amazing. So now remember, we're starting right on the edge of that paper. I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down so I know for sure it's where I want it. I'm gonna take a stitch and then back stitch and then continue straight down the edge of that paper. I'm not sewing on to the paper, just right on the other side. I've reached the end and I'm gonna back stitch again and then cut my threads. And so you can see here that I've only sewn from point to point. And when we open this up, it's this beautiful clean line and it gives us these um, little tabs that will allow us to fit our other pieces in and continue that seam allowance like we need. So let's go ahead and press this back. And then we're gonna continue by adding another petal. And I'm gonna alternate between these cute dots and these flowers as I work my way around. So I'm just going to lay this right sides together. And you can see I went ahead and put another sticker on this one. And I'm just gonna make sure my points are lined up. You can see here that this seam allowance overlaps exactly onto this one that we sewed on. That's exactly how we want that to look. So now we're just gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna sew just like we did before. Needle down right at the edge. 
back stitch and continue down the side. And as you um, get the hang of this, it really starts to move very quickly. And so you can see while I'm sitting here, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And because I have the paper on this one that I've attached, I can now turn my other petal and lay them right sides together, kind of put a crease in my center piece. Can you guys see this here, Noah? See what I'm doing? So I'm laying my two petal pieces right sides together and I'm just gonna make sure that my fabric lays where I want it. So you can see that's lining up beautifully. And then I'll take this to the machine, make sure my paper is on top so I can see my guide. And we're gonna sew down just like before. It's important to remember to backstitch each time because you are going to maneuver these seams quite a bit. And so you want those to hold as you're working your way around. But as you can see, that just opens up absolutely beautifully. And, and that sticker helps you make that, it's technically a Y seam, but it, it was you, not bad at all. It's not bad at all because you're not even pivoting. No. You're just sewing a straight line. And because it's, you have this as your guide, it tells you exactly, exactly when to stop, excuse me. Um, you don't even have to pivot no your needle work. and make that, make a Y at all. And it just folds out and irons out like amazing. So let's add one more okay. just so we can look at it. So again, right sides together. So I'm using my center hexagon as my guide. I'm gonna lay my new petal right on top of that. And then I'm gonna turn it over. And I've got my paper again as, as my template. Back stitch at the front. Back stitch at the end. And that one opens up. And again, we'll turn. Put that with our petal and you can see how once you get the hang of this it really is just going to start clicking along so let's sew this last one so you guys can see again and do we have any questions or anything coming in liz yeah a couple questions one is um from janet lucari she says cute idea only the center uses the sticky template no, so that, that, that's a great question. These, these stickers are reusable as you go, but as you work your way out, you're going to need more of the hexagons. And so like I, as, I, as I finish this one, I will no longer have a template for my sides. When I attach it to the center, because it's on the center, that one's there. But when you, um, as you go out a ring, you need a template about every other hexagon and that gives you the guides that you need. And that applies to both this, this first ring for the flower and the outer ring of 12 for um, your background. And so let's go ahead and stitch this again. And while you're stitching that too, Michelle Baker says, so the papers come and are reusable. So because they're stickers, you can use them a few times. They're not reusable forever. Exactly. I think you can get probably about five placements is what I found. Um, out of each one. It says five to 10 on the package. So it probably depends on the fabric you're using and how much um, lint comes off of it. But you can see just how great this is coming together. So let's give this a press. And you can press with the stickers right on there oh, too. Oh, absolutely. See, I mean, would you just look at that? I was amazed when I sewed these together for the first time. I could not believe how perfect they came together. and. All of the instructions are included, and they actually have some other great videos that give you some tips. Um, the wonderful lady from English Piece, Paper Piecing Made Modern, um, she's got great tips to show you how to do this. And so as you can see, I've got one where I used the red as my background, and I just continued around. So remember, we've got that one hexagon in the center, we have six to make our petal, and then an additional 12 to fill in our background space as we go all the way around. And you can see if you, you know, kept sewing, how you would just slide this in here and eventually this- You could this, make a big project. A big, beautiful quilt and it would be easy. We're gonna keep this nice and simple so you don't get overwhelmed. So let's now move into how we're gonna make this pot holder. So real quick before you do, when you have that sure. red along the outside, those aren't from charm squares anymore. This and is from yardage. Vicki Mara was asking if you didn't wanna use a charm square, what size would you cut? And I think it's three inch strip. It is, it's a three inch strip. So let me show you that. That's a great point. Thank you, Liz. I almost missed that. So I've got a three inch strip. This is my 
background fabric that I chose to use for this sample that I'm showing you here. And from a three inch uh, strip by the width of the fabric, you can get 12 hexagons with the seam allowance in it. So it's just- So that's perfect for that's that round. perfect for that one round. And so I actually do this just like this. I fold these over. So I have four, basically four layers of fabric. And then I'm gonna take my stickers, find my little score spot, there we go. And I'm gonna start by centering this up. And you can see by laying it this way, I have my seam allowance on either side. If you were to take this and try and put it on the paper, I mean on your strip this way, you'd be like, Misty, you gave us the wrong measurement, it doesn't work. You're right, it will not work that way. <laughs> you would need it to be wider. So you're going to turn it, like if you have the strip oriented this direction, just remember you wanna be able to read the words on your hexagon and that's how you'll know that it's, it's, facing. that it's facing the right way. And so I actually just, you know, laid these one after the other on my strip. I'll show you exactly how I cut it because I think it's pretty clever. And so I took my ruler and I measured down from this point, a half an inch, oops, make sure I've got that where I want it. And then I center this up. Can you guys see this, what I'm doing? Excellent. And then one more. And now, this is the coolest trick. When I take my ruler and lay it on that quarter inch line of this one, I can make a straight cut all the way across. Snazzy. And I've already got my seam allowance on that one. I was pretty impressed with myself when I figured that out. That's snazzy. It's pretty handy. And so then again, we can line up this way. Make sure we've got it perfectly straight and then cut and we can get both of those sides done at the same time. And so you just work your way all the way up. Um, and like I said, if you wanna use yardage or anything you have in your stash, it's three inch strips that you'll wanna cut um, to make this project. So it works really, really well. And, so and now- these are, these are the one and a half inch hexi stickers and we do have some other sizes. You can get all this on our website or in our supply list. Exactly, yeah, we've got links in our supply list. I'm using the one and a half inch today. I believe there's two inch and there might even be smaller. I think there might be, yeah. I think there's so, three sizes. Yeah, I believe so as well. So lots of options for you depending on the project that you're working on. So let's talk a little bit about quilting this because yes. the next step, once you've finished this whole beautiful block is to quilt it. So what I'm using is a product called um, Inselbright. And so this is an insulated batting. And when you're making a pot holder or something like that, you wanna make sure that you use that insulated batting so you don't burn yourself. And so I just cut off, you know, enough, to make sure all this is out of the way. Just laid this on here. Because I'm not doing a ton of quilting, I don't need a lot of overhang. I'm gonna quilt this right on my machine. And then I'm just gonna slice off a piece that will work. Slide this down. And like so. So then I've got my layer of Inselbright ready. And then they recommend that you go ahead and back that with a piece of cotton batting. So you wanna have two layers. So I'm gonna flip this over so I've got my block face down, I've got the Inselbright batting, and then I'm gonna put a piece of cotton batting on top of that. And then I have somewhere in my pile some backing fabric. And Liz and I did some calculations and we think for your background fabric in order to get all of the pieces you need to do the backing of this, these pockets and the binding. What did we decide? Right about a half yard? Right about a half yard, but three quarters to yard be safe. to be safe. Cause yes. I know I've cut a little wonky sometimes and exactly. we want to give you just a little extra. And we don't want to risk any errors. And so you guys can see how precise I'm being here. Um, not very precise at all. <laughs> and so then we're just going to slice. It's hiding from me under there. That's right. We're going to slice off our backing fabric. 
so that we have a quilt sandwich ready to go. And you could then base this however you see fit. What I actually did is, you guys know I love that um, free fuse powder. And so I did free fuse and fused the block to the Inselbright and then my backing fabric to the cotton batting. And then I put a few pins, just a couple safety pins to make sure it didn't shift. And then I went ahead and I just did some echo quilting of my hexagons. You could totally stitch in the ditch. You could do whatever you wanted. To me, this was by far the easiest option. So I just used my, the edge of my presser foot as a guide and went all the way around the center. And then again on the outside of that and then around that petal. And did blossom. you care about choosing thread color? Or I just opted for white yep. um, just because generally I feel like white lets the project still shine and you could absolutely match thread color if you wanted. Uh, I just went with what was easy and what was on my machine and I think it turned out great. So now that we have this quilted and ready to go, you can see how great it turned out. It looks really nice front and back. We are going to cut out the circle for our pot holder. Now we have a printable available, but if you have our Circle Magic template, it's the exact same size that I cut. And so I'm actually going to turn and use the lines of the hexagon. I actually drew center lines on my um, template here. And so I'm gonna use those lines as my guide to make sure I have this nice and centered. And so from here, you could either mark, you could use like a marking tool and cut this with scissors because it is a lot of layers that you're cutting through. So you can see here, I have this chalk pencil. We can just draw around that edge and that gives me a little guideline. I know it's probably hard for you guys to see, but I actually did just cut this with my rotary cutter. You just wanna be really careful um, and take your time. So let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna take a little break actually and grab some scissors. Hmm. Hopefully these ones are sharp enough to cut through it. We're just gonna get this out of the way so I can fold some of that bulk out of my way as I'm cutting and then line this back up. If you have a rotating mat, it would for sure be handy here. I did not think to grab one. But just take your time. Yeah, now's not the time to be speedy. Exactly not. And just go nice and slow. And you can see it cuts pretty easily. No issues at all. There we go, and we made it all the way around. Awesome. And so there is our cute petal. It's got this darling backing. This part is ready to go. So, so before we move on, there's a couple yeah. questions back when we were cutting the strip for the red backing. Sure. Um, we, you put the sticker on the front mm -hmm. to cut. Yes, but you, you wouldn't, would flip it to the wrong side. You'd flip it side. to the wrong side to do the sewing. That's a great question. Yes, you, you always need the sticker on the wrong side of the fabric when you're sewing it, because you're gonna put right sides together. Great. Okay. Great call out on that, yeah. I just, for me, my fabric was already folded that way, so I just stuck them on there, but you could totally flip it the other way so it's already on the wrong side of the fabric that you need it to okay. be. Thank you. Good call out, Liz. Okay, so now that we have these circles cut, we need to make the little flaps for our pocket. And this is done basically the same way. What I've done here is I've gone ahead and used my template the same size circle to cut circles of my background fabric and I fused it to a circle of fusible fleece. You could use regular batting here. I opted for fusible fleece. It's just a little bit um, lighter weight than regular batting. And then all I did here is fold this in half and give it a press. And we're going to take a stitch all the way down to just hold this edge and give it a nice finished look. So I just sewed about a quarter inch all the way down the edge. There we go. 
go. And so now I have both of these ready. You can see that means I don't have any raw edges. Um, it's lined with that beautiful print. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to lay these right on top of our circle. And you can see they fit perfectly. When you slide your hands in there, you can still get them in there if you leave it exactly like this. What I opted to do on this one is I actually chose to slide it out about an inch. And when you do that, you can see, it means that they're not gonna line up perfectly, but we can go back and trim that off. So what I did is I just, I actually tried as best as I could to make sure the front and the back were centered, but why, I don't know, because you're not gonna look at them at the same time, but that's just how my brain works. Sure. Um, but you, luckily you can see from your quilting kind of where those go. So I just tried to make sure that I was evenly from these points. And then I took some pins and put some pins in here to hold them where I wanted. And it's a lot of layers, but you can do it. It is a lot of layers. So make sure your pins are nice and sharp, but it's a fun project. And so then you can see here, you're wanna, gonna wanna come back and either trim this with scissors or your rotary cutter. If you take your time, you can go nice and slow right around that edge with your rotary cutter. Let's make sure we don't have any fingers in the way and see how easy that trimmed off. And so we'll just do that on the other side. There we go. And so now they match up beautifully. It's ready to go. And all that you have left to do is attach your binding and bind this as you would any other project. You do need bias binding because it's a circle. So um, you want to, you want to make sure you have that. The regular binding will gather up and not lay as nicely. The, the bias binding lets it make the curve and it lays beautifully. And so I just sewed my bias binding all the way around the front edge, turned it, and then finished it by hand. If you wanted to bind it on the machine, you would sew it to the back first and pull it around to the front and then top stitch from the front. But I just thought this and turned voila. out so fun. Isn't it such a fun project? It's so cute. And it's such a great way to like welcome the new year, something pretty and fun. Exactly. And new skills made so much easier. I know. I still cannot get over how amazing these English piece, paper piecing made modern. It's a mouthful, but it is a very, very handy uh, product if you're into making hexagons. And I'll be honest, I never, ever thought... <laughs> oh, I want to make a grandmother flowers, grandmother's flower garden quilt. And now I'm like, you know what? I think I could probably do it. It actually feels achievable now, which is really, really cool. And I think I will take my own advice and make a few of these a day until I have a big pile that I can put that together in a quilt. That sounds great. Something to make for yourself. Exactly. So, so we do have one quick question. Sure. So Maxine Anderson, I'm um, sorry. Um, is watching from Alabama, Diane Thurorski moves too quickly for me. Um, says, what does bias binding mean? So can you show okay. us? kind of let the idea of see. what bias is if you can pull and stretch um yes let me fabric. see i only have a little piece of fabric here but basically you can see this and this is straight of grain on fabric if you have your selvage edge down toward you you get very little stretch side to side but when you pull corner to corner look you at can, that go you can see how much that moves and so when we say something is on the bias it means it's cut on that 45 degree angle. And so when, instead of cutting straight strips like this for your binding, you're actually going to use that 45 line on your ruler and you're gonna turn it and you're gonna cut on that bias edge. And so that's the same size binding, two and a half inch strips, um, but by having that flex, it allows it to pull perfectly around a curve like this. Yeah. And so if you ever see a quilt with like a scallop edge or a wavy edge, um, you're going to need that bias binding. Yep. So that's what that means. That's what that means. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you are having a great new year. Thank you so much for being here and we will see you next week. See you later.